welcome to Tech X Media. This is me, Rabab Zehra. I have with me Sharif Suleiman. He is Chief Revenue Officer of Europe, Middle East, and Africa for Safe Security. And before we start the conversation with uh, Sharif, let me give you a little background. Uh, the doors of the most anticipated edition of Dubai Air Show will finally open from November 14th to November 18th next week, hopefully. And Dubai Air Show is recognized globally as one of the largest and most successful air exhibitions. So on day two of Dubai Air Show, it is purely dedicated to cybersecurity. And Sharif is among one of the speakers of the Dubai Air Show, and he will be talking about cyber risk quantification, a new approach and mindset to securing modern organizations. So before the show begins, I thought of having a conversation with him to know more about their participation and the Dubai Air Show, what they are doing and what are their expectations from the event. So without further ado, let's welcome Sharif on TechX Media. Hi, Sharif. How are you? Hi, Rabab. It's always a pleasure to, uh, you know, uh, connect with you, and I'm I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here on uh, on this session and this edition of TechX. Yes, same here. Last time uh, we met at JITEX, it was a very uh, powerful conversation, and I'm expecting uh, something similar this time. So I know that for Dubai Air Show, everyone is excited. You are excited too. So give me an overview of Safe Security's participation in the show and tell me how excited you are. Look, um, there's no doubt there's a lot of excitement. You already stated that. Uh, Dubai doesn't really do anything that's you know, not not the yeah. best in the world. And um, Dubai Air Show has been a signature, a global signature event and has really had its own prestige. Um, so we're really excited. And I have to tell you what's really very, very exciting for me um, is the fact that we have one complete day uh, dedicated to cybersecurity. And if this says one thing, it underscores the real need by mission critical organizations like you know the entire aviation sector, you know airports and airlines, um, you know to fundamentally modernize, you know their infrastructures and and take a you know a hard look at what needs to be done in term in terms of securing their their organizations and and they have been changing, you know the past couple of years I think COVID has fundamentally taken most organizations in the world. To the back to the drawing board and, and given how hard uh, the aviation sector was hit because no one was really uh, traveling they had to really reinvent you know themselves using technology to reinstill confidence you know for people to come back and we'll talk a little bit more about that but the bottom line is yes we are excited about being there we're a pretty young company with incredible ambition um, you know to champion a safer digital future and, and a safer digital climate in our industry by becoming the de facto industry standard by which organizations and specifically mission critical or mission critical organizations like airports and airlines um, uh, the way they would measure uh, mitigate and, and manage you know their risk posture so um, our platform safe is a pretty unique uh, platform in the way it actually uh, helps organizations do exactly that. And it's being used by Fortune 500 uh, companies all around the world. Um, so from that perspective, um, I could say, yep, we're looking forward to that. We are actually, we have um, two things that we're doing. One is we are exhibiting at the show all five days and we will be uh, in the Tech Explore area um, as well as on day two, Specifically, we are speaking about cyber risk quantification as a new mindset and a new approach for risk executives to um, to take, you know, and champion and, and, and leverage to to help them secure their modern organizations. That's that's great. Uh, so, uh, keeping uh, my next question around cybersecurity. Um, in what ways do you think that aviation and aeros aerospace sector is vulnerable uh, to cyber attacks? And what can we do? How can we prevent such threats? Look, um, it's without a doubt that the past you know, few years, we've witnessed a giant leap 
in terms of technological developments and advancements in, in machine learning and 5G, uh, AI and Internet of Things and, and many other mega trends, including mobility. And the aviation sector, like many other you know, industries, uh, has actually benefited and, and has embraced many of these advancements and developments, uh, including the integration of new airspace users, the, the development of advanced aircraft systems, lots of touch, touchless uh, technologies, automation and you know, self-driving vehicles and, and so on and so forth. And, and when you really take a look at the, the inter-networking between all of these systems and all these um, innovations, um, it is really important to secure and it's really important um, you know, to, to have security at the heart of that, um, specifically because all these systems have to actually interconnect and share data. So data integrity, data privacy, and, and you know, any breach to such systems will create incredible amount of calamity. So along with the positives the, you know, and, the, and the above developments, actually we've seen um, lots of threats, um, you know, and, and in our region specifically in, in Middle East and Africa, we've seen an exponential increase in, in the amount of ransomware and DDoS that have plagued our, um, you know, our, our, our region over the past five years specifically. Uh, we've become very attractive, you know, for malicious actors to target and whether it be it to cause harm, because there's no doubt if you take a look at, you know, the UAE and Dubai have been like a darling, a global darling, you know, take a look at what we're doing with the expo. We continue to fundamentally attract people that may be, may have uh, malicious intent, whether it's for, you know, um, economic benefit or so on and so forth. So accordingly, uh, ensuring obviously the cyber resilience and the cyber security of civil aviation as a mission critical infrastructure uh, becomes incredibly high priority, right? Um, and the prerequisite, um, you know, and to the sustainability of the sector, uh, it's their ability to actually grow and, and get back people to, to using um, that mission critical infrastructure in a secure manner. And when we talk about secure, it's not just secure as an infrastructure, but also secure for the people leveraging that. You know, people right now, um, they have uh, a phobia of, of going public and going to, you know, back on, on travel. They have to touch so many things. So we've seen the aviation sector respond with lots of contact, contactless, you know, uh, technologies. And I think that is becomes very important when, when you think about the sustainability of that sector, what cybersecurity and, and cyber risk, you know, right. and, and the way we, we deal with that becomes really, really important. Right. Right, um, and that's that's interesting. Uh, so uh, we, uh, you know that when we um, uh, talk on JITEX, uh, you uh, were talking about uh, cyber risk quantification. You paid uh, great emphasis on on it. So um, how essential is cyber risk quantification for critical infrastructure sectors such as aviation and defense? How important it is? Look, I mean, so we talked about digital acceleration. And we just talked about contactless technology. If you if you basically read any article on the aviation sector, you will find you know lots and lots and lots of things, including um, you know uh, you know how we're you know using AI and machine learning and cloud computing. We're streamlining you know check-ins. Right now, when I go to the you know to the Dubai airport, uh, I literally look in a in, in a camera and it just knows who I am and. And that's kind of the way I'm checking in, um, you know, the way you would be able to pre-order, you know, foods and beverage to be delivered on the plane, uh, the way you would be able to order, you know, through e-commerce mechanisms, uh, your duty free, and it will actually be delivered to you on, you know, on the plane or when you get off. Uh, robots um, uh, cleaning and disinfecting, you know, uh, airports and various aspects of aircrafts, modernizing their building management systems, correct? Uh, so it's all built on automation you don't have to kind of adjust things manually right. self-driving vehicles you know transporting you know passengers back and forth from terminals um even you know vr visors you know for entertainment inside planes so um there's this entire you know focus on carbon neutral aviation uh, when it comes to sustainability so when you think about all of that 
um, digital acceleration in aviation sector is is really you know properly um, you know profound. Mm -hmm. So according to cybersecurity ventures, we continue to spend to digitize and, and, and secure this kind of digital infrastructures, but we continue to get breached at a much faster pace. So cyber risk quantification is all around, um, you know, dealing with the data science, you know, problem or the data explosion problem in a data science fashion. It's applying data science to a cybersecurity industry to say, hey, we're amassing tons and tons of information you know, from all kinds of modalities and, and cybersecurity, uh, you know, products and that we, we have. And, and as we get all this telemetry, it's really hard to, to filter through all of that. It's, it's really hard to kind of massage and, and, and manage that data to, to a point where I need surgical insight on what my risk posture, what the risk, what are the risks that are really imminent for me to really address? Which ones are less important? Which ones I may transfer? Um, you know, to, you know, global SIs or, or, or um, service providers or cyber insurance. And cyber risk quantification is exactly that. It is the risk compass or the risk advisor of risk executives who are really tasked with, you know, managing the sustainability of mission critical infrastructure. So from that perspective, I would say, if there's nothing else that we would stress next week is to actually make sure that um, organizations know that there's additional help. There's new ways. Um, have you ever thought that you would check in just by looking into a camera? You know, you, you wouldn't have thought that. And, and we need these um, innovative thinkers uh, in that industry to say, hey, uh, we've never imagined that there's, you know, ways and techniques and platforms that can really do a lot of the um, abstraction of the lower level details and tell me exactly what I really need to do in real time, such I'm, that I'm actually acting in real time to continue to secure my organization. Right. So yes, it is it is the need of the R to uh, take these steps. Uh, so uh, uh, building on to my previous question, uh, we all know that it's it's not easy. Huge investments are required to big, build a secure IT infrastructure. So if organizations continue to invest, will they see our return on investment? So I think the answer um, isn't really what you and, and the audience and, and the listeners are gonna like. We have been investing. Um, again, take a look at the, some of the research done by you know, um, Global Ventures. Um, we're spending about $800 billion this year you know, in global cybersecurity uh, products and services. And it's projected to hit, you know, around 1.8 trillion, say, let's say 2 trillion between friends, okay, by 2025. Now, if I give you, you know, the stat around the economic loss from cybercrime, uh, you may fall off your chair. Um, in 2018, it was 3 trillion. Remember, today, we're spending almost 1 trillion. So even three years ago, <laughs> you know, cybercrime was, was more than we spent today. By the time next month comes, cybercrime would actually topple six trillion. That makes it the largest, the third largest economy in the world in 2021. And it's projected to grow to almost eight to $11 trillion in 2025. So that's equivalent. So if you're sitting in 2025 without any change to the way we practice, you know, cybersecurity and manage cyber risk, if we continue to wake up in the morning and do the same things, it, we in 2025, it would be equivalent to for every $2 I give you, I take $11. That's not sustainable. So in my opinion, um, you know, due to the siloed nature of the way we practice cybersecurity, and for the most part, cyber risk is always translated to products and services in cybersecurity, which is not the case. When you take a look at cyber risk, you need to take a look at an enterprise-wide construct that focuses on the moving parts of the organization, people and supply chain and technology and cybersecurity and organizational policies, all coming together in real time, correct, to provide that you know, posture assessment. 
So from that perspective, continuing to be siloed and throw products are going to continue to give us siloed information that is really not able to give organizations the proper return on investment because the, the current stats basically are telling the story. It's, it's, things are not working right now. And um, in my opinion, if the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same things and expect the different results, CRQ will break that chain and, and SAFE is absolutely, as a pioneer of cyber risk quantification, we're committed to, um, to helping organizations. That's that's great. So uh, going back to the Dubai Air Show discussion, because cybersecurity discussion, I think if we will keep on talking, it will never end because it is the hot trendy topic of technology industry. Okay, so um, uh, when the event will end, what will be your key takeaways from the event this year? Well, you know, to answer that, Rabab, and that's a very good question, because at the end of the day, it's, you know, what does it all mean? Hmm. Uh, we're, we're participating, you know, for two major reasons. One is we are really passionate, you know, and a high, have a high degree of conviction about helping the world and, and helping those um, at the Dubai Air Show. You know, organizations, uh, including, you know, not only the aviation sector, we'll see lots from the financial sector and, and the healthcare sector and the manufacturing and the energy sector. There will be a lot of executives that will basically frequent uh, that show. And, and we want to basically have the platform to say, hey, we're here to help and you know, just like we continue to innovate in so many ways, we need to really innovate and take a right angle turn in the way we really think about, you know, cyber risk. Um, and the other uh, real um, major reason or major um, focus is understanding, you know, and during the air show, we'll, we'll talk about the trends, we'll talk about the challenges. And for me, we're gonna be listening actively to understand what else, how else is that sector looking at their challenges for the next five years? And what does that really mean for us as a pioneer in the way we take our products and functions and features to make sure that, you know, we're doing things to help them? Yes, that's, that's, that's right. Um, it was a wonderful conversation with you, Sharif. And it was a pleasure uh, uh, talking to you and uh, having you here at TechX. And we look forward to have more uh, conversation with you in future. You know, um, for people like you, Rabab, I have all the time in the world. It's a pleasure. And thank you so much for inviting me to this. And I look forward to connecting you, connecting yes. with you again. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Stay tuned to TechX to know more about what is happening inside the technology industry. Goodbye.